The skill set of freelancing has become pretty viral over the past few years. The reason being is that many people want to increase their income, but they don't want to necessarily get another job or even get traditional employment. They want to control their hours, control when they work, and they don't want to have a cap over their earnings over a period of time. In a lot of cases, they already have some skills which they can use to make money. So the thought rises in their head, why don't I start freelancing? Why don't you start freelancing? Once that question is asked, some people go into the freelancing world and learn how to do it. Other people are deterred because it's an unknown world that they don't really teach you the fundamentals of in school, among other things. That's why in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five tips that you wanna implement to start your freelancing career off in the right way. These five tips will help you maintain money, help you make more money, and also help you keep accurate records so you don't give too much of that more money to Uncle Sam. So let's get into it. Sup everyone, this is Elijah with Financial Anatomy, the place where you can take control of your financial destiny. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, side hustles, ways to make money online, and also investing. And we specifically talk about financial problems that are plaguing young adults. That's why in this video, we're gonna be talking about freelancing because whether we realize it or not, a lot of us are in the freelancing world and we may not even know it. Do you have ways of making money outside of a traditional job? If you do, chances are you might be a freelancer. With the exception of if you're selling a product, if you're selling some kind of service, you're already in the freelancing world and you may not even know it. And there may be some things that you're doing that are actually detracting from your progress or some things that you could be doing to speed up your progress towards your financial goals. And as someone who makes around $2,000 per month just freelancing part-time, this is separate from financial anatomy, I scale freelancing back so I can focus on financial anatomy, but I still make around $2,000 per month freelancing as a video editor, social media manager, and occasionally website designer. So I'm gonna share with you those five tips so that you can get started on the right track freelancing so that you can make the most money possible that you're capable of making. Tip number one is to actually find your trade. So freelancing is a skill set, but it still requires you to have some kind of trade that you're offering. In order for you to efficiently find a trade, you need to know what talents that you have to offer society as an individual. There's basically six talents that people exhibit in this financial world. Those talents are boldness, technology, creativity, health and wellness, attention to detail, and sociality. If you wanna start freelancing, you need to take one of those talents which you just naturally have and mold it into a skill set. But if you can actually mold two of them into a skill set, that's even better. Perfect example, when I do video editing, surprise, surprise, I'm using the skill set of technology, but I'm also using the skill set of attention to detail. See how there's two of my natural born talents in there and I'm using them? You wanna find out what those talents are and then find something that's gonna fit those talents. Once you do that, you wrap a freelancing career around that. There's plenty of trades out there. You got photography, you got a video editing, graphic design. If uh, you're skilled with that lawn mower, you could uh, mow lawns. I would be here for days if I mentioned all the trades that you could acquire, but you do need a trade in order to start freelancing. It usually takes between 30 to 90 days to officially own the craft of a trade and learn it. And some of them may actually take a year if you're looking at something like plumbing or being an electrician, something like that, where you need to go to a trade school. Just keep that in mind, but once you learn it, then you'll be good to go. Now to get off the ground, you're gonna have to do something that most of y'all probably don't wanna hear, but you're gonna have to do work for free in the beginning in order to build your network up to start getting steady clients. I know y'all wanna hear that because you're gonna say that, well, I have bills to pay, I have my mental sanity to maintain, but I wanna ask you this. How do people typically spend money when they need a service done? They usually find someone within their network, a friend of a friend or a referral to get the job done. And you are a stranger with no network starting out. The only way that you're gonna move in front of someone's cousin or brother or someone who is in that network is if you offer to do it for free. There's no getting around that. In addition to this helping you to get started, you'll also have a chance to own your skill as a freelancer because when you first getting started, most likely your skills won't be up to par with the marketplace. So you can see where you need to make improvements, get feedback, and then raise your skills up to that market price. Once you do that, ask the client if they don't mind giving you some referrals at the very minimum a testimonial that you can use to get the ball rolling and secure your next sale. 
Once you do that about maybe five to 10 times, you should be good to go as far as charging people the standard rate or even higher if you decide to keep raising your skills. And speaking of payment, that goes into my next tip, which is setting up multiple payment options for your clients to pay you with. A lot of people just have one standard way to receive money or they don't even think about this at all. You can't do that when you're freelancing. You need to have multiple merchant accounts so that your clients can pay you. You need to make it easy for people to give you money. Let's say if you just have one means of accepting payment, but there's some kind of issue going on with that account. Does that mean that you have to go just a few days without having access to your funds, without having access to receive money? And then you'll try and sign up for multiple services then, but you know that might take a day or two, so you're just gonna be in limbo for a while. Just think ahead of the game and sign up for multiple services. You have PayPal, you have Square, you have Stripe, you have uh, Cash App. In fact, I've made several videos on this channel about Cash App, so that's probably the easiest one to get into. But if you're like me, you're signed up for all of them because if something happens to one of them, well, guess what? I have other means of accepting money from clients. And since we have now mentioned the word client, that leads us into tip number three, which is knowing exactly where to get your clients from. When you're starting out, you may not know the answer to this question, but you need to find it pretty fast. Every trade has ideal places where you can find ideal clients or customers. Now this is gonna vary from trade to trade, but I will give you some universal places that you can start looking. If you are making money on a computer or your skill set is more digitally based, you might wanna consider using Fiverr or Upwork, Guru.com or Freelance.com to find clients that can use your services. If your trade is more so offline, like let's say you got skills with that uh, lawnmower or your photographer, something like that, then you might wanna consider going to networking events and just mingling with people there, explain what services you have to offer, and you'll be surprised how many clients that you'll bump into at these places. And even if you don't bump into someone who needs your service, they may know someone needs your service and they can act as the connecting bridge. This is one of the main ways that I built my clientele up because I'm gonna be honest, I never really went the Fiverr Upwork way. I always got my clients directly from the marketplace. Another thing I did back in the day was I went to the Chamber of Commerce and I promoted myself there. The way the Chamber of Commerce is set up in most cities is you go there and there's always some kind of a weekly or monthly meeting where you get up give like a 30 second to a minute pitch on what service that you're offering. And then you can bump into people who probably need that service. That's something that happens on a regular basis. So you should probably be there pretty frequently because it's just a place where you can find clients or find people that can connect you to clients. And for those of you that are making money online and you use Fiverr Upwork, I would say that you shouldn't dismiss doing this either. You should probably be doing both the Fiverr stuff, the Upwork stuff, and doing what I mentioned as far as networking events and chamber of commerce. In addition to other places you might meet people, they could be potential clients. The fourth freelancing tip that we want to talk about is a, probably the most important one in a sense if you ask me, and that's to make referrals easy. Do you have a referral program? If you don't have one, you need to make one. Reason being is this is how you're gonna expand your network and I wouldn't stop doing it until you're literally stacked with clients and you have no choice but to turn that referral program off because from a time perspective, you can't handle any more clients. Obviously, once you get there, that's a good problem to have. But getting there, you need to have some kind of referral program because people will send other people your way if they can get a little something out of it. Will they do it without a referral program if you do a good job? Maybe, maybe not. But if you want it guaranteed to happen a decent amount of time, have a program set up. And once you have some kind of program of compensating your customers, then you need to make it easy for them to refer people to you. Now, I know some of y'all are not gonna like this, but this is where having a website or at the very minimum a web page is gonna do wonders for you. If you don't wanna design the website, just hire someone to do it for you off of Fiverr. I mean, there's plenty of uh, website uh, tools nowadays like Wix or Squarespace that you can use. And even if you don't want a full website, just a web page that explains your services and prices and has your contact information on there, goes a very long way. You can set some real quick up like that with lead pages. If you're interested in that, you can click the link in the description below and you can just hire someone off of Fiverr to design this quick lead page, pay them like 50 bucks and then you're done. It's done. You now have this page is set up that can help referrals come in at a fairly decent pace. The main reason I bring this up is the lack of having this established is the reason why people stop referring others to you. Because if it's hard for them, they think it takes too much energy, they won't do it. 
I'm gonna give you a great example of this. One of your clients wants to refer you to one of their friends. So as they're talking about you over the phone, their friend is asking them, well, what about this and what about that and that, 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 and that. Guess what? Now your client is having to answer all these questions and do all this work. It's kind of making them hesitant to refer you again because they don't want to do all that work. They already have a full-time job or a business or a relationship to maintain or kids to take care of. They don't want added stress on top of that, so they're just going to stop referring. What if you just have it set up so that all that your client has to do is say, oh, well, just visit their webpage. Their friend then goes to your webpage, gets all the information they need, and then they call you. See how easy that is? The only time your friend should bring you up to your client again is when they're just praising them for introducing you. Hey, he or she did a great job. I, thanks for introducing them to me. I got what I needed done. When that happens, guess what? Your client feels good. And if they feel good, human nature is to keep doing something, which in this case is getting you more clients. Make it easy for them. The fifth and final tip I have for you when it comes to freelancing is to keep accurate records. A lot of times when we uh, work jobs, we get accustomed to companies keeping accurate records for us, taking the whole tax responsibility on themselves, that kind of thing. When you're a freelancer, all that's gonna be your responsibility. So you need to maintain some accurate records as far as money that's coming in, money that's going out, and also what expenses are tax deductible when it comes to your particular trade. Now I'm not a tax advisor, so you can take this with a grain of salt, but I am someone that's been freelancing for the past five years. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt, but it also comes from experience. Now, when it comes to maintaining records, I personally use Stride. Their system that I can input all my expenses in, and they actually let me know as I'm going throughout the year, how much I'm probably gonna owe in taxes based on the estimate. But they're not the only uh, game in town. There's also QuickBooks Self-Employed, as well as some other services you can use to maintain accurate records. I'll leave links to these in the description below, but just make sure you do have your bases covered and don't stop learning about potential deductions that you can use in your field. Remember, if you don't do this, you're gonna get hit with a pretty big tax bill at the end of the year. And there's no reason for that to happen because there are some deductions that you're gonna be able to utilize in your field, no matter what it is. Every trade has deductions that you can use. You need to educate yourself about that so that you don't pay the bulk of your money to Uncle Sam. And speaking of giving money to Uncle Sam, I do have a bonus tip for you, which is kind of an honorable mention, but a darn good one. But if you're gonna be freelancing full time and you're not gonna go back to a job scenario, you do need to start planning for retirement in some form. And one thing that's perfect for self-employed individuals, because if you're gonna be freelancing full time, you're gonna be self-employed, you might wanna look into opening a SEP IRA. Reason being is, you can make contributions to that SEP IRA that are tax deductible, and that's something that can lower your taxable bill at the end of the year while investing in your retirement at the same time. Not gonna go into heavy detail on that here because I've done a video on a SEP IRA. Then you can check out by clicking the link in the description or in the pinned comment or in the card right now. With that being said, I've given you, well, six tips on freelancing. I know I said it was five, but we did throw in an honorable mention. You can count that as an additional tip if you want. But we've talked about freelancing and you should be well equipped to go ahead and get out there and take control of your financial destiny. So that does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or stories, leave them below. I read every single comment and also respond to everyone. I'll be sure to answer any questions you have about freelancing and I will catch y'all in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, hit that bell notification if you want to be notified when another video drops and hit that thumbs up button if you found value in this video. I'll catch you in the next video. Be safe, be profitable.